first grade. Are you ready for some story time? Look who is ready. Oh, a big yawn because he's already getting comfortable as Joey gets ready for us to finish. Oh, is he gonna let us finish? The Lost Treasure of the Emerald Eye. Let's find out what happens to Geronimo Stilton. Look at Joey, he has his stuffy. He has his comfy blanket. Look, he's already laying down and totally comfortable. You do the same. Press pause if you need to go get a pillow or a blanket. And let's finish. Let me see if I can get it away from Joey. Oh, Joey, I need the book so I can read it to the first graders. Okay, let's finish. Geronimo Stilton. Here is where we left off. Remember, we were reading Geronimo's diary that he was writing to himself. Let's see what happens with cheese slices that night. Thea stayed up very late. I wonder what my sister had up her sleeve this time. You just never know with that mouth. Early the next morning, while we were having breakfast, Thea arrived out of breath. Hooray! I did it, she cried, waving the map. Trap jumped. Do you have to scream so early in the morning? You know, I'm not awake until I've had my cup of steamed cheese. Two sugars. Hold the milk. What is it? Thea jumped onto the table and cleared her throat. <clears throat> Remember what we said? <clears throat> I have discovered she began drum roll please what 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 shouted trap grabbing her by the tail sia shot him a smug su smile first i've determined our position my sister pointed to the map first we have to head north towards more water bay then we go around what's the point peak and head toward mohill mountain there we'll find the Flea ridden fur river. We follow the river to head, oh, excuse me, to hard as nails hill. And from there, we should be, at, it should be as easy as pie to find the emerald eye. Look at Trap on the next page. At the mention of the world emerald, Trap put his arm around Thea. Oh, my little cousin, let me be the first to congratulate you, he beamed. Did anyone ever tell you that you are a real genius? So what did you say the treasure is exactly? Or where did you say the treasure is exactly? Thea snorted. What is the matter with you? Let me show you the picture. What is the matter with you? Are your eyes covered with, what, cheese? Look here at the map. She squeaked squeaked, flapping it under a trapped snout. There is an X on it as big as a moon over Mouse Island. Trap just smiled and stroked Thea's paw. My dear, sweet, kind, beautiful, charming little cousin, he said. I suggest we leave tomorrow morning. No, maybe tonight. As a matter of fact, I, I could be ready to leave. What? Right now. Wait a minute, wait a minute, I jumped in. We have to map out our route, calculate the times and the stages of our trip. Trap was getting more and more frantic. What time, what stages? This fly mouse here has already organized everything. We are leaving. That's that, he squeaked. Then he and Thea put their heads together and, be and began discussing the details of the journey. Of all the nerve, it seemed as if I was already left out. Meanwhile, my nephew sat munching the last cheesy chew with a dreamy expression on his face. Treasure, real, honest to good mouth treasure, he murmured. He murmured. Oh, what's this one called? One Skull. The plan was to leave at six o'clock the next morning. But by four o'clock, my cousin was already up and about. Ratoons, we are leaving, Trap shouted through a megaphone made of banana leaves. Thea grabbed a coconut and hurled it at his head. Do you realize what time it is, she shrieked, chasing him around our shelter. When I catch you, I'm going to use your fur to make earmuffs, Trap just giggled. If you don't hurry, I am going to leave without you, he shouted through the megaphone. I am ready to rock, ready to roll, 
ready to rumble. Let's see what's going to happen. Ready to party, ready to go, go, go. Thea was tearing at her whiskers in a rage. You are the one who brought him along, she yelled at me. And what's he saying through the megaphone? Can you see it? If you don't hurry, I am leaving without you. Is that so silly? I wanted to say, actually, it was your idea, but I stopped myself. The look in my sister's eyes was murderous. We set out in a single file. We marched all day long. By evening, we came to What's the Point Peak? Thea pointed at the map. We have reached the location. Let me see if I can show you the picture a little better. We have reached the location of the first skull. Listen to this secret message. Do you see the secret message right there? Let me read it to you. Listen to this secret message. If you find a big rock the color of cheese, don't run around, don't even sneeze. Somewhat puzzled, I looked around. This must be the rock on the map, I said, pointing to a round, cheddar-colored boulder. It looks good enough to eat. I took a few steps forward, but there is nothing to see here, just sand. Actually, a whole bunch of sand. I didn't get to finish my sentence. I was beginning to sink. Look at me, I giggled. Look at his, you see him giggling down there? He's giggling. Look, the sand has reached my ankles. No, my knees. Oh dear. Sia's eyes opened wide. She was not laughing. Geronimo, I have a bad news for you, she called. I'll come back and show you the picture. Hmm, what's the bad news, I asked, watching the funny sand. Geronimo, my sister squeaked, I think that's quicksand. I gulped, thundering cattail, quicksand, I shrieked. And then what did he yell? Help! The sand had already reached my belly button. Stop loving your arms, shouted Thea, holding her paw out. But I kept flapping and flapping. Help! I shouted as the sand reached my ears. Chap raced over, carrying a long green vine from a nearby tree. Grab hold of this, cousin. If you ever want to squeak again, he cried. Let me show you the picture. Can you see it? Are you ready to see what's the next chapter called? And what do we see right at the top? Okay, let's find out what happens with the two skulls. Once again, Trap had saved my life. Oh, why, oh, why did I ever agree to take this trip? I must be losing my marbles. When I get back to New Mouse City, my fur will have turned white from all these scares, I mumbled. If we ever get back, that is, out of Trap in a grim voice. He always knew how to cheer me up. The next morning, we crossed Mohill Mountain and marched along the banks of the flea-ridden Fur River. Finally, we sighted hard as nails hill. This is it, announced Thea, the place of the two skulls. Let's see what happened. I shivered. What would we find this time? More quicksand? Exploding boulders? Grouchy grandma one whiskers with a plate of her disgusting Swiss cheese muffins? I looked around. We were in a clearing with one very tall tree standing in the center. It was loaded with big yellow fruit, and look, they looked sort of like pineapples. Thea read aloud the secret message about the two skulls. Are you ready to see the secret message? There it is. See, it's written in red. Let's see what it says. Beware of the honey tree. Its fruits are known to sing. Listen, but do not touch or you will feel the sting. Trap stepped forward. Fruits that sting? How ridiculous. Let me take one of them rat ratoons. I'll knock one down with a stone, and then we'll see. Stop! Don't do it, I shrieked. Don't worry, Jerrykins, my cousin laughed. So what if they sting? Anyway, I'll just avoid touching them. See? He pitched a stone right at the biggest fruit in the center. Don't call me Jerry 
I started to say, but I stopped in mid-sentence. The yellow fruit was not a giant pineapple. It wasn't even a fruit. It was a giant beehive. Help! I screamed together. The beehive was oozing thick golden honey. Within seconds, do you see what came out? Within seconds, swarms of bees flew out from the honeycomb, hanging on the branches. Hurry to the river, shouted my sister. And look, she says it even like big. Hurry to the river, shouted my sister. We raced to the river with the bees right on our tails. Then we drove, then we dove head first into the water. The current carried us downstream. When we reached the bank, the bees were gone. Thea pulled out her map. Let's see. To our left is Hard as Nails Hill. And in front of us is Pirate's Peak. That means if we go forward, we'll hit the three skulls. Do you see how she's figured it out on the map? Can I see it? Look at next chapter. We're already there. Three skulls. In front of us lay a narrow path made of stones. Each stone had a letter engraved on it. Thea read aloud the message of the map. See, and there's the letters, and there's the message of the map. A dangerous trap lies ahead. Be oh so careful where you tread. Solve this riddle and you'll see the right stones will set you free. For lunch or snack, it is delicious. Without lots of holes, it's quite nutritious. White or yellow, sharp or mellow, leave some for others. Be a good fellow. Hmm, it's an interesting message. I wonder what it means. Oh, we're going to see. I'll show you this picture again after I read the page. That's where they're at. Kind of neat, huh? Okay. I reread the riddle several times. My cousin tapped his paw impatiently. Okay, let me see if I can show you this way. I don't know if I can do that here very well. Well, Mr. Newspaper Mouse, you work with words. What does it mean, he asked. His paw kept tapping faster and faster. Well, come on, what are you waiting for? We don't have all day, you know. Trying to ignore my cousin, I stared at the riddle. The answer was right on the tip of my tongue. What has lots of holes? What is white or yellow and delicious? Suddenly, I clapped my paws together. It's cheese! I shrieked with glee. You must jump on the letter spelling the word cheese. What digraph do you see there? Good. Before we could stop him, Trap hopped onto the stone, engraved with the letters C. Then he hopped on the H and the E and the S. Oh no, what happened? How many E's did he hop on? Can you see? Oh dear. Look out! The rest of us screamed. Spelling has never been one of my cousin's strong points. Of course, there are two E's in the word. Jeez. The minute trap set his paw on the wrong stone. It gave way and down he went. I peered into the hole. It was very deep. A foul-smelling odor rose from it. Wait a minute. I could just make out something in the bottom. Oh, no. I was looking at a bunch of bones. Oh, dear. Okay, let's figure out what happened with, can you see the title? Poor trap. Poor trap. Let's find out what happens to Poor Trap in the next chapter, shall we? Poor Uncle Trap, sobbed Benjamin. Poor cousin, we won't even be able to visit his grave, murmured Thea, wiping away a tear. He was such a great mouse. Do you remember when he saved your life at sea, Uncle, cried Benjamin? Even I felt terrible. How could I ever forget, I moaned. Trap saved my life not once, but twice. The first time at sea and the second time from the quicksand. He was so courageous. Cynthia added softly, Well, let's be honest. Sometimes he could be a pain. 
Benjamin jumped right in. Actually, now that I think about it, poor Uncle Trap could be pretty annoying. I stood up and dusted the dirt off my paws. In fact, I think he was totally obnoxious sometimes. A pain, annoying, obnoxious, a voice called out from the hole. We peered into the deep pit. Trap was hanging by his pants from a tree root. Hang on, Trap. We are coming to the rescue, I called. We lifted him out in no time. Trap looked a little pale. Still, he sounded just as irritating as ever. You know, I heard all, let's see if I can show you, all the bad things you said about me, he said. Then he smiled. But I guess you said some nice things too, especially you, Jerry Mug. In fact, Geronimus, I could give you a kiss. Hey, that's pretty good, he giggled. Hee <laughs> hee. I groaned. Why, oh why, had we pulled him out of that hole? Gold doubloons. We started hiking toward the X again. According to Thea's map, we had almost reached the Emerald Eye. Trap practically skipped the rest of the way. I'd never seen him so excited. Well, there was that time he won a free cheeseburger at Burger Mouth. Trap's voice interrupted my thought. Hey, Cousin, do you think we'll find other things besides the Emerald Eye? I mean, you're the expert on this stuff, right? Could we find jewels or lots of money? Well, we could find some mon some old coins, I answered. Maybe we might find some gold doubloons. Let's see if there's a picture of one. They have a picture of the cat prince Meow Iron Claw, also known as Snarls the Mouse, muncher on them. Trapped in a little dance. Doubloons, doubloons, gold doubloons. I just love the sound of that word, he chuckled. Meanwhile, Theo was checking the map. She pointed straight ahead. That's it, she announced. The emerald eye should be right in front of us. Trap ran ahead, then he stopped. He looked around, confused. I don't see any emerald here. All I see is water, he squeaked. For once, my cousin was telling the truth. On the exact spot where we were supposed to find the emerald eye, there was a deep lake. Trap snorted furiously. Thea said, but this is exactly where the X is on my map. If it is the right place, then we are on the wrong island, and it's all your fault, Trap cried, chasing after Thea. I sighed my head and put my head between my paws. Benjamin sat beside me, looking sad. Just then, I heard leaves rustling. The sound was coming from the forest nearby. Shh, keep quiet, everyone, I whispered. Something back there is moving. We all strained our ears to listen. Something or someone, whispered Trap in a shaky voice. He looked at us. Let's see. Who can go check things out? Ben is too young. Thea can't be of any help because she is a uh, female, which isn't true. She could still be of great help. And it's really only right that I stay behind to look after those two. So that only leaves you, Geronimo. Better get going, he concluded, pushing me towards the bushes where the noises were coming from. At that moment, Thea sprang into action. Just because I'm a female doesn't mean I can't take care of things, she shrieked. She grabbed her knife with two paws and charged towards the bushes. Watch what she says. Show yourself if you dare. She squeaked, moving aside a few leaves. Little Benjamin trembled beside me. Trap whimpered. Even my tongue-talking sister was shaking. I chewed on my whiskers. I imagined a pack of furious wild tomcats or maybe lions on the other side of the bushes. So this is how it would end. We would all become snacks for some mouse-munching monsters. All of our sailing and swimming and hiking and sweating for nothing. It was almost too much to bear. I closed my eyes. When I opened them again, I saw the strangest sight. In front of us stood a group of animals. No, not a band of drooling tomcats, not a pack of roaring lions. It was a party of mice. They were dressed in bathing suits. Someone had, some had cameras and camcorders. 
One of the mice stepped forward. Hello. Are you guests at the resort? He asked. Look at that's what they ran into. That mouse. Are you guests at the resort? He asked. Resort? What resort? We all squeaked at the same time. Ret Retins, tropical resort and health spa, of course, the mouse said, giving us a strange look. Oh dear, where are they? Look at the title of this chapter. Snip, snip, and there they are after they were shipwrecked and everything. Let's see what happens on snip, snip. For a moment, I thought maybe I was just having a bad dream. I pinched myself. The mice in the bathing suits were still standing there. At last, Trap spoke. Ratlin's Tropical Resort, he repeated. Do you mean this is not a deserted island? The guide looked at us with curiosity. Deserted island? You should see the mounds of rodents on this beach, he said. This is our biggest time of the year. Trap turned to see us fuming. It's bad enough that you brought me to the wrong island, but did you have to bring me to a tourist trap? I couldn't believe it. I felt a lump of despair in my throat, like a mouse being served at the Grand Cat Buffet. Meanwhile, the tourists were staring at us in amazement. With our ratty fur and torn clothing, they didn't know what to make of us. A shy-looking mouse with big ears approached Thea. A um, miss, did you take one of Ratlin's survival classes, he asked. Thea stared at him. For a minute, she looked like a mouse caught by a flashlight. Then my sister snapped to attention. Survival lessons, she repeated. Why do I look like a rodent who needs lessons? Take a look at this knife. Look at they do look kind of beat up, huh? I can... Chop a rat's tail in two faster than you can twitch your whiskers. Snip, snip. She cut a tree branch in two with one clean blow. Her audience shuddered, hypnotized. Can I walk you back to the resort, the mouse with the big ears asked my sister. I would love to take you to dinner tonight. I know a great little restaurant right on the beach. We'll see, my dear, we'll see, squeaked Thea, flattered. I shook my head. Benjamin and I sat out towards the resort. Towards the resort. Trap just stared off into space. But the treasure, he repeated over and over. The treasure. Look at the, the guy who watches Thea cut it with her knife. Do you see? Okay, let's see. We're almost to the end. Just a couple pages left. No treasure. Fasten your seatbelt. After listening to our amazing adventures, the manager of Ratlin's Resort got us four first-class seats on the first flight back to New Mouse City. Well, actually, three seats since Thea had decided to stay at the resort a few more days. He's such a dear, Thea had shrieked about her new big good friend. I have never met such a charming mouse. Geronimo, why don't you stay here at the resort for a longer too? I want to go home. I just want to go home, I kept telling her. The time to leave finally came. Now boarding, blasted the loudspeaker at the airport. We climbed onto the plane. All rodents, please fasten your seat belts, the pilot requested. A pretty flight attendant with dark brown fur walked down the aisle, passing out slices of tasty Swiss cheese. Have fun on your vacation. Oh, sorry, I read that wrong. Have fun, it was a question. Have fun on your vacation, asked the mouse, seated next to me. Fun wouldn't exactly be my first word to describe it, I thought. How about disaster or nightmare? But I nodded. Loads of fun, I grumbled. Trap was back to his usual self. I heard him talking to a flight attendant. He told her he was an expert sailor. Then he began telling her about our adventure. I missed most of the details. I was too busy looking at the view outside my window. This was the first time I had seen the island from above. It was quite a sight. Right in the middle of the island was a lake as green as an emerald. 
And, of course, the lake was exactly where the treasure was supposed to be on Thea's map. Now, that was odd. From up in the sky, the lake looked just like an... Can you read it? Yes, the lake just looked like an emerald green eye. I, emerald, oh dear. Holy cheese, I squeaked excitedly. Benjamin, who had fallen at sound asleep, woke up with a squeak. Look, look, I shouted, pulling Trap's tail. I jumped out of my seat and pointed out the window. It's the emerald eye, I shrieked. A frail white-haired rat waved her book at me. Shh, she said, glaring. Other passengers threw me dirty looks. Oh, well, guess I wouldn't be winning the most popular passenger award. So that is the treasure shown on the map, I cried, ignoring my newfound enemies. My cousin just snorted. Jerry boy, to me, a treasure is something you can spend. All you can do with the treasure, all you can do with that treasure is wash your socks in it. I sighed, sinking back to my seat. The shimmering green lake in the middle of the island moved further and further away. Benjamin laid his head on my shoulder. I think the emerald eye is wonderful, a wonderful treasure, uncle, he said. It's the most beautiful treasure I have ever seen. It is beautiful. Although I think it looks a little bit like a crocodile eye. Mega huge fridge. It was so nice to be home again. Clean sheets, a hot shower, and my mega huge fridge stuffed with the best cheese a mouse can buy. Today I bumped into trap. You have such a way with words. Why don't you slap together an adventure story about the treasure hunt, he suggested. Are you kidding? I am a busy mouse. I run a newspaper. It's unthinkable. It's impossible. It's ridiculous, I replied. That evening, though, I leafed through my travel diary. So much to write about. What an adventure. Maybe for once, Trap had come up with a great idea. Tennis Top Club. Six months had gone by since the day we returned from our trip. I followed Trap's advice and wrote the book. I published it too, and you'll never guess what happened. It sold. Like catnip at the the blah, 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 blah. like catnip at the Meowville movie theater. The book is already on the bestseller list here in New Mouse City. Now this is what I call a real treasure. Shouted my cousin, waving his check in the air. I figured it was only right to give him some money from the book. After all, he was a big part of the adventure, even as if his was mostly an annoying part. To celebrate my success, I invited Silky Fur, a very pretty lady friend of mine, to the tennis top club. I couldn't put the book down, you know. I never knew you were so brave, whispered Silky Fur in my ear. I was beginning to think our adventures might have been worth it. There they are, playing tennis at the club. I think this might be our last chapter, our last few pages. Are you ready? Hello, Jerry. See the question mark at the top? And then you can see what the phone is saying. Ring, ring. At the crack of dawn one morning, I got a call from Sia. Jerry, get ready for an unbelievable piece of news. Do you want to see how she wrote that word? Guess what I discovered today, she squeaked. I know, I grumbled, crawling back into bed with the phone. Another map. You know what I'm talking about, my sister insisted. No, I don't. What are you talking about? What map? The same as last time. Do you remember? The mouse house, cheddar ravioli, extra spicy sauce. Don't let me say any more, she demanded, sounding mysterious. And then look what he's writing. He's repeating after her. The mouse house, cheddar ravioli, extra spicy sauce. Another map? I threw back the covers and jumped out of bed. This could only mean one thing. My crazy sister was planning another trip. No, oh no, not this time, I shrieked into the phone. Not on your life. Don't you have a boyfriend now? Why don't you go ask him to go with you? 
Who, old big ears? I got rid of him like moldy cheese, she giggled. But let's talk about more serious matters. <laughs> How does Geronimo look? A little tired since he got woken up, huh? Oh, last page. You wouldn't let me go on my own, would you? You are my older brother, after all. Where is your sense of duty? It could be a very dangerous journey. Hello? Jerry? Jerry? Are you still there? Jerry? Jerry? Squeaked Thea. Don't call me Jerry, I wanted to say. My name is Geronimo Stilton. But I had no strength left. I put the receiver down on the nightstand. I already knew where this was going to lead. What do you think? Do you think they're going to go on another adventure? I think they're going to go on another adventure. I guess we'll have to find out. Okay, first grade, after Easter, we'll start another chapter book. But for now, during Easter time, we'll be reading Easter books with our videos. I love you. Take care. I'll see you soon. Bye. Go read a lot. First grade. Guess who's already ready for story time? It's time for us to finish Geronimo Stilton and the Treasure of the Emerald Eye. Joey's ready. Look, he has his stuffed sloth. He has his comfy blanket. He's kind of yawning. I wonder if he's going to fall asleep during story time. I guess we'll have to see. So grab your stuffy, grab a blanket, and let's finish our book.